Hello everyone and welcome to another very important game from the penultimate round of the 2019 Isle of Man chess tournament. It's Fabiano Caruana versus David Anton Guijaro and uh, we said that we we're going to show one more game at least and then uh, talk about the standings a little bit and who will get the uh, <laughs> the spot in the candidates tournament. So uh, let's uh, dive straight into it. Uh, Fabiano with the white pieces opens with C. That's not a C. That's a, uh, uh, with C4. Uh, the English opening with E5 uh, and Knight to C3. Uh, the reverse. Sicilian variation of the English knight to c6, knight to f3, and the g6. Uh, uh, Anton prepares uh, to fianchetto the dark square bishop with d4. Uh, e captures, knight captures, and the bishop to g7. Now attacking the knight twice. Knight captures on c6, d captures on c6, b captures on c6, preparing d5. Uh, sorry, not b, d captures on c6 was played. And here we have a queen trade. Queen captures, king captures, and the bishop to g5 with check. We have king to e8 and now uh, Caruana just castles queenside, already threatening mate in one with rook to d8 mate, so bishop to e6, now the rook covers the d8 square, and e4. And this position has been reached a few times, uh, and uh, the mostly played move was knight to f6, but here uh, Anton has bishop to h6, and it seems this is a new move he prepared, as uh, it is already as a move 10 that we have a completely new game. He offers a trade of dark square bishops, uh, and you don't really have a choice of declining this. You could play something like h4, but then after f6 uh, you would again have to trade. So here Fabi just trades with bishop captures, knight captures, and bishop to e2. Uh, and okay, king to e7, connecting rooks, now comes b3, uh, strengthening the pawn here, so you can uh, shift this bishop over to f3. We have f6, uh, and now comes h4. Uh, knight, to f knight to f7, remaneuvering the knight back into the game, and now f4, taking away uh, these two squares from the black knight. We have h5 by black, and now bishop to f3. Uh, with a5 by black, uh, not allowing any future expansion with uh, with something like this, uh, and now comes rook h to e1. Uh, with bishop to g4, now uh, Anton uh, wants to trade the dark square bishop as, uh, as well. Uh, with bishop captures, h captures, and now g3. And here rook a to d8. So here uh, Giharo pretty much uh, has everything... Um, uh, nicely nicely done. Uh, he, if he trades the, the pair of rooks, then uh, no, nothing should be uh, a problem here. Uh, Fabi trades one pair of rooks with rook captures, uh, king captures now. Uh, he wants to keep the rook here on the h8 file uh, square for the time being, uh, sort of uh, as a repercussion. So if the rook to h1 comes, the white cannot push h5 and break through. So rook uh, back to h1, now still not allowing this rook to move, and now king back to e7, and king to d2. Fabi starts bringing his king into the game. Uh, we have b6 by black, uh, and now knight to d1. The idea is knight to e3 or f2, and to go after the g4 pawn. We have a4, uh, creating weaknesses on the queen side. Also, he wants to play a captures, a captures, and maybe remaneuver this rook over to a8, so he can uh, in infiltrate uh, white's position. We have knight to f2 by Fabi, going after the g4 pawn, and now a captures on b3. We have a captures on b3. And now your g4 pawn is under attack. The problem with f5 is, of course, white will not capture. White will go rook to e1, now threatening to capture with check. And after the king moves, uh, e5 check creates a pass pawn for Fabi. So not something uh, Giharu wants to allow. He goes rook to a8. He, he gives up the uh, g4 pawn, but he will grab some pawns on the queen side. With h5 first by Fabi, there is no rush to capture on g4. Uh, rook to a2 with check and now king to e3. We have g captures on h5 and finally rook captures on h5. Rook to b2 going after the b b3 pawn and now knight captures on g4. We have rook captures on b3 with check, king to f2 and now rook to b2 check. King to f1 and here Giharu goes for a series of checks. Uh, rook to b1 check, king to e2, rook to b2 check, Fabi goes back, king f3, rook to b3 check. King to g2, and after rook to b2 check, uh, Fabi plays king to h3, saying that he's very much interested in playing out the descent game, as his uh, pieces are a bit more active, and, uh, uh, well, uh, Giharu has a double c pawn, so it, uh, go it, it is a little advantage uh, for white. Rook to b1, now threatening rook to h1, uh, with check, so rook to f5, going after the f6 pawn, as both the knight and the rook attack it. So Giharo uh, takes this opportunity to uh, make a double attack against the rook and the pawn, knight to d6, 
We have rook captures on f6 and now knight captures on e4 uh, with an attack on the rook and rook back to g6. We have rook to h1 check, king goes back to g2 and now rook to c1, going uh, again after the c4 pawn. And here uh, Giharu goes for knight to c5. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, first knight to e5 from Fabi. We have rook to c2 check, king to h3 uh, and now c5. Uh, so the, the c6 pawn is no longer a target and now king to g4. Fabi makes his way into the position with the king uh, and here knight to d6 going after the c4 pawn uh, as it is now attacked twice. So what can you do here as white? Uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, try to continue this uh, uh, game with white while I give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on being such a such a great endgame player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's f5. This is what Fabi played. Uh, and now already you can see that f6 is already covered, f7 is covered, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna get uh, very complicated here. Uh, Giharo captures the pawn with knight captures uh, on c4, and now first rook to e6 check. As the knight covers these squares, the king has to go back. King to d8, and now we have knight captures on c4. Rook captures on c4, and king to g5. So here, Fabi decided to sacrifice a pawn, uh, so he's now down a pawn in a rook and pawn endgame, but uh, his pass pawn is, is a really fast pawn, so let's see what happens. Rook to c3, first attacking the g3 pawn, Fabi pushes it forward, we have g4, and now c4. So, of course, it's going to be a race. Uh, king to f6. Uh, now comes rook to g3, again attacking the g4 pawn, and now g5. Uh, as the c-file is now cleared for black c pawn, we have c3. Fabi continues g6, and now how do you continue? Uh, you don't really do uh, gain anything by c2. If c2 just rook to c6, you're never going to queen this pawn. You can't go back with the rook because just rook captures. Uh, another interesting idea is c5. Now rook to c6 uh, doesn't really do anything, uh, but you have rook to e2, and this... Um, pawn will not cross the c2 square so you have to start pushing the other pawn as well and now let's say king f7 b4 uh king f7 uh wasn't really uh, that great of a move but i'm just showing this line <laughs> just to see how how complicated it is to uh, to mess up king to g7 was the way to go but king to f7 is extremely interesting because of g7 b3 uh and now rook to e8 check uh for example king to c7 now comes rook to e7 check and here it's uh, basically a draw. You will not be able to do uh, anything more here. The problem for black is uh, that if you go back to any of these squares, let's say king to b6, then you allow this check and then the rook just blocks the pawn. Uh, rook captures, you'll get uh, pawn captures or king captures, uh, doesn't really it doesn't really matter. c2 and now you get a queen into the game. Uh, black also gets a queen into the game, but now uh, queen captures on b3 with check and this pawn is much, uh, much faster than the... Uh, then the c pawn, although uh, with with correct play, it also should be a draw. Uh, so uh, Giharo starts pushing uh, the other pawn instead of c5 and instead of c2. We have b5, uh, g7 by Fabi, and now b4. And here king to f7, now guarding the queening square with the king. And here the problem with c2, although I mean you you do want to start pushing your uh, pawns, is uh, rook to g6. Again, just blocking. Uh, uh, the, uh, so the rook will not be able to sacrifice itself uh, and after rook captures and pawn captures c1 queen uh, you're getting a, a queen with check and now after king to d7 you're gonna go queen e8 check king to d6 queen e6 check and after king c5 you're gonna play queen e5 check a nice centralizing move and after the king moves and now you push g7 and you are getting your second queen much faster than black can do anything so, uh, we have uh, a different move. Giharo goes for rook captures on g7 with check. He can't allow the, the g pawn to queen. King captures and now c2. Uh, of course, preparing to, to queen the pawn. And now rook to c6 uh, wouldn't, wouldn't really work. If rook to c6, you get b3, uh, f6, and now king to d7. Attacking the rook, f7. King captures on c6, f8, queen. and But now you also get c1, queen, and uh, now uh, black is just up two pawns. So here Fabi went rook to e1, guarding the queening square uh, sideways, and now b3. Uh, we have f6 by Fabi, b2, uh, quite a race this is uh, turning out to be, f7, and now c1, queen. And now the problem for Giharo is that, of course, Fabi will not capture. Fabi first brings a queen into the game while still having a rook on the board. 
king to d7 and now uh, once again feel free to pause the video and try to find the quickest way to victory for white while i give you a couple of seconds uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the quickest way uh, for white to win. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, if you try something like queen, queen here, check, queen here, check, then you allow the black king to start running down the board. But with queen to f5, check, it's a bit different. This is what Fabi played, and it was in this position that David Anton Giharo uh, decided to resign the game as you don't really have uh, any more moves. It's, it's basically a mate in four. After the king moves, uh, we have rook to e6 check, king b7 and queen to b5 check. And now whatever you play, uh, you're just getting mated. If you go here, then this is mate. If you go something like this or this, then you just rook to a6 is mate. Uh, so whatever you do, it's uh, after queen to f5, it's mate in three. So yeah, uh, Giharo resigned here, and uh, with this victory, uh, Fabiano Corona takes sole lead in the tournament, and here we are now going to show the standings after 10 rounds. Uh, so these are the standings now, and we have to discuss the standings a little bit because it's just uh, really crazy. Fabiano uh, sole lead with 7.5 out of 10. Then uh, with 7 points, we have uh, 7 players, Van Gaal, uh, Kirill Alexenko, uh, Magnus Carlsen, Levon Aronian, uh, Nikita Vitigov, Hikaru Nakamura, and David Howell. And uh, since uh, Corona and Carlson are basically not competing for uh, for the spot in the candidates, of course, they, uh, Carlson is not playing in the candidates and uh, Fabiano uh, gets uh, automatically into the candidates for being the previous World Chess Championship challenger. So it's basically uh, between the between six of them. So who are we going to see in the candidates? Van Gaal, Alexenko, Levon Arna, Nikita Vitigo, Hikaru Nakamura and David Howell. Howell played a beautiful game yesterday against, against Grishuk and uh, ended up on 7 out of 10 uh, like everyone else it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, well it's gonna be hardest for i believe uh levon and and for uh, hikaru because levon faces magnus and hikaru faces fabiana Coruana. so here uh Coruana and magnus uh, have an opportunity to uh to, you know to kind of block uh levon and hikaru from from the candidates if they just play a, a, a solid game don't allow them to go for a win uh but then again you know uh, I, I don't think something like that, uh, uh, that they're interested in doing something like that. Uh, but both of them have the white pieces. Hikaru has white against uh, Caruana and uh, Eleven has white against Magnus. So I believe uh, they will try everything to get uh, to get a win in today's game and uh, get their spot in the, in the candidate. So it's going to be uh, really awesome, but it, it'd be awesome to see every one of these players uh, in the in, in the candidates tournament. David Howell, uh, in particular, uh, I think it would just be uh, a, an awesome opportunity for him. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Ramakrishna Malaboyna and uh, Gleb Kopchenkov for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the um, Isle of Man chess tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, well, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.